Next question says, suppose the remainder obtained while dividing x is x by 61 is 2. Okay, what is the remainder obtained while dividing x to the power 7 by 61? All right, everyone, this is a very good question of number system, right? And the subtopic is divisibility, right? It's a very good question of number system. Question says the remainder obtained while dividing x by 61 is 2, right? So x by 61, the remainder is 2, okay? Then what is the remainder obtained while dividing x to the power 7 by 61? All right, everyone, I won't solve this question with 61. I'll show you to how to solve this type of question with some smaller, smaller numbers, right? For example, we have 8 divided by 5. So 8 divided by 5, what is the remainder? Remainder is 3, right? When we divide 8 by 5, then the remainder is 3, right? But when we divide 8 square by 5, right? So 8 square is what? 64. 64 by 5, what is the remainder? Remainder is 4, right? And this remainder 4 represents what? This remainder 4 represents, like this is actually, this is equivalent to when 3 square divided by 5. 3 square means the remainder 3, right? So if we have done 8 square, then the answer we are getting is 3 square right but 3 square is what 3 square is actually bigger than 5 so 3 square will again be divided by 5 right in fact ideally the remainder should be i mean 8 square is divided by 5 then the remainder should be 3 square but 3 square is what 3 square is 9 so 3 square is one more time divisible by 5 so it will be divided by 5 and the remainder will be 4 right so here we are getting the remainder is 4 right now this is 8 cube 8 cube by 5, then the remainder must be 3 cube. 3 cube is what? 3 cube is 27. 27 is again divisible by 5. So 27 by 5 is 2 is the remainder, right? Now, 8 cube is what? 8 cube is 512. If you are doing it directly, 8 cube. 8 cube is what? 512. 512 divided by 5, then obviously 2 is the remainder, right? Clear? Let's have one more example. So what I want to say is, if 8 divided by 5 gives you 3 as a remainder, then 8 raised to the power n divided by 5 will give you 3 raised to the power n divided by 5 as remainder. Right. What I want to convey is this. Fine. So now let's take one more example. Suppose that uh, um, 14. 14 divided by 11. 14 divided by 11 gives you 3 remainder. Right. Okay. So 14 square is what? 14 square is 196. 196 divided by 11 will give you uh, 3 square, this is 9 as remainder, right? It is like this. All right, everyone, fine. So here, if x divided by, now let's come to our original question, x divided by 61 is giving you 2 as remainder, then x to the power n divided by 61 will give you 2 to the power n as remainder, right? Clear? So uh, now if 2 to the power n is smaller than 16, then that will be the answer. If 2 to, 2 to the power n is bigger than 61, then obviously this number will be again divided by 61 and that that number will be taken as the final remainder or the final answer, right? So here, x to the power 7 divided by 61 will give you 2 to the power 7 as remainder. Now 2 to the power 7 is what? 2 to the power 7 is, uh, is uh, 128, right? So 128 is further divisible by 61, right? So 128 is further divisible by 61 and it will give you 6 as remainder when 128 will be divided by 61. Why? Because 61 into 2 is 122, right? 61 into 2 is 122, right? So obviously, if 121 will be divided by 61, it will give you 6 as remainder, right? So final remainder of this question will be 6, right everyone? So the answer is 6. It's a very good question, right? And for solving these type of questions, you know, uh, it's not necessary that you need all the theorems or all the properties. No, just just put the small, small numbers on it and you will get the final answer. Right, everyone? And please try to cross check it again. I mean, uh, suppose that if you have checked it for one number, right? Suppose that, I mean, here I have checked it for one number, but I have cross verified it for other number two, right? If the property is being satisfied or not, right? And if it's if it is like satisfying in two or more than two cases, then yes, you can generalize that property, right? And 
uh, you can get the answer right so this is what this is actually smart approach for solving these type of questions right whether you know the property or not but your question won't be wrong right so it's a good question in fact uh, all of you should uh, practice the type, these type of questions before going to the examination right now let's try the another one 